Good morning. In this week's parasha of Shlach, we read about the lamentable incident of the spies who investigate the land of Israel, come back with this negative report, which is accepted by the people. They tell Moshe they do not want to enter the land of Israel, and Hashem denies them entry, even though they change their minds afterwards and want to do Teshuva. Hashem tells them that ship has sailed, they are not coming into the land of Israel, and in fact, all of the adult males of that generation are now destined to die in the wilderness. And many of our commentaries ask the question, what is it about this sin in particular that causes them to lose out on entree to the land and possession of it, whereas many of the other sins which they've committed, for example, the golden calf, seem that they could well have been even more severe than this one. There are a number of approaches to this question. I'd like to share a few of them with you today. The first one is to say that it's not necessarily that this sin was any worse than the previous ones. It's that there is a cumulative effect. It's that after the, the lack of faith that they'd shown before crossing the sea, after crossing the sea, the complaints about the manner, the complaints about this, the, all of the various problems that they had created, the lack of respect for Shabbat, and so on and so forth. Finally, it's reached the point where Hashem has said that you know, enough is enough. In, uh, in rabbinic terminology, it's malah say'ah. The measure has been filled. We have a similar thing when it comes to the residents of the land of Canaan. That they are wicked and their wickedness is like filling up like a pot until eventually it's going to overflow. And that's when Hashem is going to send in the Jewish people to dispossess them. So there's a certain measure of sin that needs to be filled so to speak, before Hashem takes effect. That's the first approach. But if you look at the way that Hashem actually says it in the Torah, even though Hashem does say that they've tested him ten times, what Hashem does say as well is that the idea of the 40 years in the desert is going to be corresponding to the 40 days that the spies investigated the land. This is in chapter 14, verse 33 and 34. Uvenei chem you roim b'midbar arbeim shana. Your children will wander in the desert for 40 years. And they will um, bear your guilt, essentially, until uh, your bodies finish in the desert. According to the number of days with which you explored the land. A day for a year, a day for a year. So from this verse, it seems to be that it's not so much an accumulation, but that it is a direct response to the sin that they've done over here. It is directly because of this that there is a problem. So uh, within this idea that the sin of the spies itself contains sufficient reason to deny the Jewish people. And when I say the sin of the spies, obviously it's their acceptance of the spies report, not just what these 10 guys did. They, uh, they themselves had their own separate punishment for their behavior. But the, the sin relating to the spies and the evil speech about the land in and of itself had the power to deny them entry to the land of Israel more than anything else. So again, two basic approaches, or three even, that I'd like to share. The first one is from the Magid of Dubno, and he says the our problem here is that the Jewish people did not desire or appreciate Israel. It's like Hashem has offered them this gift, the greatest, most holy, most spiritual country in the entire world. Hashem's offering this to them, and essentially they say, no, they are completely undervaluing and completely devaluing this incredible gift to us. So Hashem says, if this is something that you do not appreciate, then I'm not giving it to you. And they can say, oh, well, you know what? We actually do want it. But this is such a beautiful thing that you should, you should jump at it. You should really welcome and embrace and long for the opportunity. If you have shown that you don't appreciate it, even if Hashem says, that's a mistake, and they say, oh, oh, it's a mistake, then we'll change. You've lost it because clearly if you don't appreciate the value of what this is, then it would, to, in a sense, be a waste for Hashem to give it to you. That's that first approach of the Magid of Didna. The second approach is that of the Maharal of Prague. And he says the real essence is how they did the sin. What kind of sin was it? Where was it coming from within the person? The sin of the golden calf, he says, you could view it with various motivations, but to an extent it was an intellectual sin. 
The intellect is a component of the person. We also have other sins that the Jewish people committed, which were physical sins, the body of the person, which is also a component of the person. But the capacity for human speech, he says, is something holistic and something that involves the entire essence of the human being. You see, when we speak, it is synthesizing our thoughts and our body, our emotions. It's taking all of our intellectual capacity and investing it in words in this world. It's taking our physical abilities and elevating them to the level of abstract communication. Speech is something unique in all of creation. Animals do not have speech because although they have roughly the equivalent of the, the, physical, you know, the, the, the physical tools for communication, they may not have a sophisticated voice box, etc., but they don't have the ability to formulate complex thoughts, which they could then put into words. Angels or spiritual beings, on the other hand, have all of these complex thoughts, but they lack any kind of physicality. Their influence is all, so to speak, behind the scenes, above the visible, tangible of this world. We have this unique position where we are able to bring both the spiritual and the physical into reality at once, and that is with speech. And that is why the Maharal points out, when you look at the creation of the first man in the book of Bereshit, Hashem says that Hashem blew a spirit of life into his nostrils, uh, blew the soul into his, in, in, in man, and man became a living soul. The Targum Unculus, the great Aramaic translator of the Torah, translates that as Man became a speaking soul. His definition of man as a living soul is man as a speaking soul because again, it is our speech which gives us our uniqueness or expresses our uniqueness as this hybrid creature of physical and spiritual. And therefore the Maharal says all of the other sins which involved some aspect of the person or of the nation, some component of them. It was a partial sin. It was a sin that incorporated some of us. We were partially invested in it. However, this sin of the spies, where we expressed the spies, verbalized a bad report about the land. The people verbalized their acceptance of it. That was really what it was about. It was about expressing perceptions into the world and making them reality and accepting them. That's what speech is all about. And since it was a sin of speech, which is such a holistic sin, that was something that really uh, destroyed the ability of the Jewish people to then come into Israel. And that way it was much more severe. Right? You can discuss whether it was, you could say, maybe deeper or worse than the sin of the golden calf, but it was certainly more holistic and they invested more of themselves in terms of human beings in it. That's the second approach of the Maharal. The third approach is that of the Kotzka Rebbe where he says the difference is that when it came to the golden calf, they wanted spirituality. They said, make for us a God, a Salanu Elohim. What were they looking for? They were searching for God. They were searching in all the wrong places. God is not a golden calf. They, they made a terrible mistake. And it was a mistake for which they had to suffer the consequences. And that mistake probably was influenced by their own desires and everything else. Fine. But ultimately, what was at the core of what they wanted was spirituality. And yet, was holiness, was connection to God, something great in themselves, something transcendent. And yet, when you look at the spies and the complaints about Israel, what is it? It's not a good land. Uh, people there are, you know, are, are giants and they're too big. And we're not going to have a great life expectancy. It's not so comfortable. It's expensive. You can't believe the cost of petrol. They were physical complaints. We don't want this land. We want an Asa land, right? We want like the land of Egypt. That was the problem. That's something Hashem says, no, that, that I can't let you. Even if you're making mistakes, but if you're coming from a place of some level of authentic search for spirituality and godliness, we can work it out. But if your problem is that it's not enough luxury, if your problem is that your physical desires are not being met, we're not on the same page. I can't help you. So again, the ideas here, why is it the particular sin of the spies? The first approach is, perhaps there was nothing particular about the sin of the spies, but it was cumulative. The second approach is, they didn't want the land of Israel, so why is Hashem going to give them the land of Israel? The third approach is that speech is something more holistic and therefore potentially more dangerous. And the fourth one is that the golden calf was a search for spirituality. 
the uh, sin of the spies was a search for greater physical pleasure. Shabbat shalom.